everybody, this is Beth McKinney. Today we're going to go over some ways to make gem clusters. Uh, there's a lot out there on the internet that explains how to do this. I did a post last year that went over some basics, but today we're going to make uh, bling tiara clusters. So hopefully you can see those. They are beautiful and they're great to have for the birthday girl. They're a little extra special, so you may not want to use them on every child in a party but they're definitely something you can use to upsell your work and to make it more appealing to customers. So we're going to go over how to make those today and I hope you enjoy it. To make the tiaras, you'll need tulip dimensional fabric paint in silver glitter or gold glitter, wax tipped wands for placing gems, large focal gems, smaller gems to complement the design, and plastic page protectors with graph paper. So since we're getting close to Valentine's Day, I'm going to do a design that's kind of a Queen of Hearts tiara. Works well for that. So I'm going to begin by making my basic tiara structure by laying down a bead of my dimensional fabric paint, and I'm using the glitter gold. I try to stay a little bit above the surface while I'm doing this, so I'm not sitting right down on the surface, so I get a bead that's um, rounded on its edges. So I've got my first curve that's going to be on the forehead. The second thing I'm going to do is put some of the glitter fabric paint in the shape of a heart in the center. That's where I'm going to drop my focal gem. If I need to, I can add some more around it. Let's see if I can get this one up. This one's adhesive on the back, so I have to pick it up and drop it into place. Normally I would use this as a wand, but and I'm going to press it down very carefully so it's centered on the line. And I'll add just a little bit more around the edges. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at my grid and make sure I'm keeping everything very symmetrical from side to side. I find that it's a little harder to do the left side than the right side, so I'll do the left side first and then match the right side. I'm careful when I'm working. You notice that I had already done one tier on the left. I work from left to right because I'm right-handed. Otherwise, I could put my hand right through one that's already finished. So I'm going to put a curve line there and another matching curve line on the other side. And I'm using my grid to try to make it as symmetrical as possible. I'm going to make a loop down there and one that matches again on the other side. Or as matches as much as I can make it match. I'll fill in a little bit there. And then for this one, I only have three loops on each side. So I'm going to make another loop. And another loop on this side to match. And then I'll add one final loop on the bottom. I'm going to add a little extra there. Any place I'm planning to put a gem, if it's a larger gem, I'm going to add just a little bit extra. Okay, now I'm going to put down my gems. These are a little larger than the gems that I like to normally use, but I think that they'll still look really nice in this. The smaller the gems, the more delicate a look it has. Most of the time, it releases very easily when it touches the glitter, but once in a while it won't. If it doesn't, I just take another wand and tap it right above the space where I want to put it. There, now I've got three on each side. I'm going to put three on the other side as well. And as I place each one, I'm looking to see if it matches its placement on the opposite side. So I want that as close as possible. I'm also going to put one right down in the center because I think that that will give it a pretty look. Now, if you have other colors that you think will work well, you can incorporate them in the design. For this, I'm going to put a couple of yellow or golden 
toned gems. So I'm just putting a little bit here and there. Wherever I put these makes it look a little lacier, a little more pretty. Um, it has a little bit of a milky look right now. When it dries, it will look more like these look. You can see that one is really pretty down at the bottom. That's the, the one that's very similar. It's got the three smaller gems on either side, the heart in the middle, the red one at the bottom, and the two gold gems. And once it dries, it really looks beautiful. So I hope you found that useful. Um, making gem clusters takes a little time and it does take practice. I can see a big improvement over where I started a year ago versus where I am today. So if you practice a lot, you'll find it becomes easier and easier to control the different materials you're using for making them. And you'll get a better feel for which gems work well for focal gems and which gems work better for support gems, which can flush out a design. So I hope that you can use these this year and that you make some beautiful clusters with the gems that you have. Bye-bye!